I'm Lisa Evers, and this is Street Soldiers. It's a new world in more ways than one. Take social media influencers. They found a way to use the digital explosion to leave the nine to five grind behind. People will do anything chasing popularity and social media likes, even crossing the line with dangerous or destructive behavior. Now Instagram will test hiding the likes to ease the pressure and mental stress of low numbers. It's a responsible move, says groundbreaking marketing strategist Sean Prez. They're paying attention to the fact that many people are chasing these likes. It, people are posting and they're not really having dis discretion or they're not really having discernment in terms of what they're putting up so long as they get the feedback and they get the likes. Fashion and beauty influencer King Steph turned her high numbers of followers and likes into a business that became so lucrative she put her Columbia master's degree on the shelf and quit a full-time office job. She's paid by fashion and beauty brands to model and post her pictures and views it as a launch pad. I don't just want to stay here doing this one thing. I think it's really important to grow and use this platform to, to launch yourself upwards. And here's your actual earbuds. Flossie Carter has more than one million subscribers on his tech-oriented YouTube page and has the plaque to prove it. The former paramedic who worked at Ground Zero on 9-11 started making videos as a hobby and found about six years later it became much more than a labor of love. I was starting to make the same amount of money on YouTube that I was making at work and I was doing both of them at the same time. And then I noticed that I wasn't spending that much time with my daughter. I, you know, I didn't have a lot of free time. So I decided to make a choice. I got to quit one or the other. YouTube won out. Flossie says his following appreciates the fact that he gives his honest opinion and the income streams just keep flowing. You make money from ads on your videos, the watch time of the video, the longer the video is, the more opportunities you have to put ads in that video. There are many financial rewards, but it's not as easy as it looks. Let's find out what our panel has to say. Joining me for this episode, Sean Prez. He's the president and CEO of Power Moves Inc. He's a corporate speaker and a marketing strategist. Prez, great to have you with us. Oh, great to be here. Thanks for having me, Lise. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Also joining us is King Steph. She's a model and influencer. She's a Columbia, has a Columbia master's degree and NYU undergraduate degree. Steph, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Also with us is Flossie Carter. He's a tech influencer, has over 1 million devoted YouTube subscribers. Flossie, great to have you with us. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Steph, first of all, what is an influencer? We hear this term being thrown around all the time. Yeah, um, I think to me, an influencer, uh, you can have influencers with millions of followers, you can have influencers with 20,000 followers. I think it really just is a person who has a social media presence and gets that engagement from an audience that's captive to them and really cares about what they're posting and really wants to engage with them on a regular basis. That's how I define it. Now, how did you get into it? Because you have a master's degree from <laughs> Columbia, <laughs> yeah, okay? Yeah. I Ivy League school, a big degree, sure. a lot of credentials but you're working full time as an influencer now. How did that yeah. happen? Um, so originally I had a little following back in the day when Instagram had first started up and I deleted it because I was going this professional route. So I probably had 12 or 13,000 deleted it because I was nervous that it was going to influence my um, you know, professional development. And then I restarted my Instagram. I had a few pictures go viral, reposted by different sites. And I kind of thought to myself, okay, like stop running from it. It keeps coming to you and just kind of leverage it and work with it. Um, so for a while I was working full time I was uh, getting my master's part-time at Columbia and then also I would be shooting on the weekends or after work um, so it was a lot I was just building this all at the same time and then eventually um, I finished my master's and I saw that I had a little saved up and I just I hated my last job so I quit and right when I was running out of savings like down to my last thousand um, I got my first big contract and I remember I cried I read the email and I cried um, but it's really such a blessing to be able to use a platform that I built myself and and to work for myself and you know it's been great it, it really has I never imagined this for myself but um, I'm blessed to be able to do this all right we're going to talk about what a day looks like and how how you how you work in that in just a moment but Flossie and how did you get into it I actually got started making videos for fun you know I had downtime in my office so I'd make videos to kill the time during the day and um after a few videos I noticed a lot of people in the comments were looking forward to my next video so I just kept doing it over and over, putting videos out. I've always been into tech, so I've always bought the latest products, and I started making videos and just giving my natural opinions on them. And I noticed that people started to take my opinion more seriously than some of the bigger names or some of the actual companies. 
So I just started, actually started doing it for fun. And then when I seen a couple of dollars start rolling in, <laughs> it was like, all right, well, maybe I need to be a little more serious. So then took it from there. And then you got a little more serious. Yeah, a little bit more serious. Started, you know, uh, putting out more videos more frequently. So people started liking them even more. And then it, it went from kind of like underground to mainstream once um, a few big name companies seen the videos and they liked it. So now here we are. All right. And we're going to talk basically mainstream. We're going to talk about how we got to here we are right now. <laughs> All right. But Prez, in terms of from a, from a marketing standpoint, mm -hmm. why has this influencer kind of industry gotten so big and why, why does big business like it now? Well, first you have to address that the traditional forms of marketing are pretty much dated. You know, traditional television, print ads, you know, people are just not tuning in the way they once did. Um, the social media aspect, you know, we see kids, we see adults um, on their phone all day, every day. These influencers, they have more power over the buying public than, you know, traditional um, media outlets have ever had at this point. So, and typically, it's coming from a trusted source. If somebody decides to follow you or subscribe to your channel, they're interested in you. They're interested in your opinion. And if you recommend a brand or you recommend a product, they're more inclined to go out there and, you know, let me test this out for myself because I trust the source. So more effective all the way around. Absolutely. S Steph, how did you get, okay, so you, you, you quit your job. <laughs> I quit my you, job. You, did you have a moment where you were like going, how am I gonna pay the bills? No, I think it's great that I have a master's as kind of my backup. I, I got more into this halfway through my master's and I wasn't just gonna quit and not get it. So I think for me, I have a little bit more stability than maybe some other influencers who don't have that backup plan. Um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely have moments where it's hard, right? Influencing, influencing. It's like a new market. There's no blueprint for how to do it. Um, you Take know, what us through the evolution, though. Like, did people see you when they start sending you stuff? Yeah, or they yeah. Tag um, you or they so the pictures DM'd will go viral. They'd be reposted on different pages, um, and then companies will reach out to you. They'll send you a DM. They'll say, "Hey, we really love your photos and your pictures. We'd love to send you some free products." I think when you first start out, that's how it goes. You get free products. You don't really get paid so much. Um, but then as you start, you know, growing your following, more reposts, the company reposting you helps as well to grow your following. Then from there, you can, you know, demand what you're worth. You can demand money for posts and for stories and things like that. So you definitely have to put your time in building your following and creating those relationships and showing what you can do. But I think after a certain point, you should definitely be making money for it. So when you got your first contract, can you tell us like, like what range was that or how much was that? And what was it for? It was enough for me to be able to quit my job and not worry about bills or paying my credit card or rent for six months. So it was a six month contract. Wow. Yes, and it was, like I said, a blessing. I, I'm getting chills thinking about it right now. For clothing or for beauty yeah, products? Yeah, for, for clothing. So um, just getting different outfits and modeling them and showing them off online and you know putting up the link where they can buy them for, for some of the big like um, online fashion Like we're companies. talking six figures, five figures? Not six figures, five figures for sure. That's, so, that's incredible. Which is great when you think about it. Um, and like I said, I, I don't take any of this for granted. I think it's a, a huge blessing to be able to do creative things, work from home, and, and make what someone's making, you know, like entry level. No so. rush hour commute, no, no sitting on jam you know, subways. Like yeah, it's great. <laughs> that's, uh, that's unbelievable. <laughs> the walking around like we do with four bags to three different things and <laughs> six different places in one day. And Fl Flossie, tell us, how did, you turn it into the, how did you turn it into the money thing? Well, like, did they hit? Did the electronics companies hit you or they, now? They when I first started, it would, with anybody that does tech product videos, when you first start, you got to buy the stuff yourself. So I was spending a lot of money mm -hmm. out of my own pocket. Right. But then it's like after a while, the companies will reach out and they say, "Okay, we see you did a video for this. We have a similar product. We'll send it to you for free." So with YouTube, we we make the majority of money with the ads. But once you get a little bit bigger, then it's like now instead of sending me the product for free. It's like, look, I'm busy this week. If you want your video out this week, you know, give me ten thousand dollars, give me five thousand, you know, depending on right. the level of your channel. So then they'll, you know, they'll pay that because, like Sean said, nowadays people don't care about TV commercials. A YouTube video is bigger than a TV commercial. You know, a YouTube video from my personal channel, I know for a fact that I've kept certain companies in business. There's companies that was literally going out of business after my video. They're back in business. So this so, is a this is a full time this business is a full time for you. job, and you support your family and everything. Mm. Like maybe uh, maybe like five years ago, I was working my regular job. I had a little side hustle going also, but then it's like 
when I noticed that YouTube and my regular job money was starting to be equal, it was like, okay, maybe I could, <laughs> I have to quit one. I have to quit one because I'm a little bit too busy. So I took a chance, I quit my, I had a full career. You know, if anybody Googled me, I worked as a paramedic. You know, I had, I was a full nine to five job, benefits and all that, and just walked away from it. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. But you got to dedicate yourself to it, though. Exactly. Yeah. President, more and more people are getting into this. Like, absolutely. are there certain certain characteristics that the successful ones have? Oh, absolutely. I mean, marketing is marketing. Let, let's start there. It's all about authenticity, credibility. I think that the people who are most successful are the people who are truest and honest to who they are. They really, um, they don't just take a check just to take a check. They endorse products that they number one would either wear or if it's a tech product that they would use these are the people who you know are going to be trusted by their followers and they're going to be the ones that actually command the biggest dollars you know we think of some of the biggest influencers on planet earth you know it would make sense um kylie jenner we've all heard of the the, the kardashian and jenner family you know she's a billionaire now right but it makes complete sense because of that the family's into is, makeup and yeah. Right, the uh, authenticity point. We'll take a short break. Yep. This is Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. We'll be right back. Once you have a certain amount of followers or a, a certain following, you can do anything you want. Recently, Instagram said that they are test, testing a, a, a way to not have likes on pages. Uh, Prez, do you think this is going to hurt the whole influencer industry? I do. I think that... um. Well, I don't know about the, the, the entire influencer industry, but I think that it's going to have a negative effect just with their users. You know, it was a study done um, a few years ago, whereas people, when you get a like, it releases dopamine in your brain. You know, it, it's <laughs> equivalent. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like drugs. And people really go out there and, and they post for these likes. So not having that incentive you know, I understand why the social platforms are, are at least testing it because they want to make sure people are not just posting um, things that might be considered harmful just for the likes. But I think that it, it, it might take away in the end for the end user. What do you think about that stuff? Um, I agree with Prez. I think that um, the content creators who use this platform and have created a business off of it, they already introduce an algorithm that limits how many of your followers that you earned see your content, which a lot of people, including myself, think is unfair. So taking away the likes, I, I think. Wait, can you just explain that for us? Sure, yeah. For those of us that don't have a master's yeah. degree, can you explain <laughs> that for us? My master's The algorithm and the this and the that. Okay, just <laughs> break that. it down, Steph. So please. Instagram recently introduced an algorithm that limits the amount of reach your posts organically have. So normally back in the day, let's say you have 200,000 followers, your 200,000 followers have the potential to see your photo that you post now only I think it's three to five percent actually get shown the photo that you're posting and then based on how it performs in like the first few hours and how it's doing then it's kind of boosted to your other followers I am sure that all of my followers don't always see all of my content and um, so that that is a, a big issue with a lot of content creators because you feel like you know I earned this platform on my own I built it by myself and I'm not even able to benefit off of it fully and I can definitely see a change in the engagement from six months ago even to now um, so that's been an issue and then you add this on top of it taking the likes away sure you can take a screenshot of your metrics page if you're if you're using this as a business you have a business account which shows you your engagement levels your likes all of these things and legit companies will ask for that data to make sure that you haven't bought your followers that everything is actually going as it should um, so there's always that option for influencers but I think instead of focusing on removing the likes I think they should focus on removing people who cyber bully and things like that because I have way more of a problem with that on a daily basis than really else. absolutely like what kind of like bullying oh people say mean things all the time you have to have a really really thick skin <laughs> to be on social media because people don't really look at you as a person they look at you as a figure as and disposable entertainment yeah they can say whatever they want to you it's like if somebody walked into your house uninvited and criticized your living room furniture I'm like I didn't ask you to be here you know what I mean but people really feel like they have that kind of partial ownership and do you clap you. back or do you just I do clap back <laughs> I clap back you... when it's appropriate right. right I feel like once in a while you need to check people um, but most of the time I just block because I feel like you can't really engage with negativity on a daily basis like that it's, it's bad for your mental health yeah it's so I just much. do my own thing but once in a while I put them in their place and let them know like 
you this block or page. delete. Yeah, yeah, you just yeah, delete yeah. those cut de- de- delete <laughs> those comments. Most of the time, yeah. Flossie, what what about the whole like thing? Um, on an Instagram platform, that would destroy their whole their whole social media site because half of the fun of being on Instagram is seeing your likes. Right. <laughs> That's the term. Do it for the gram. You know, do without right. likes, <laughs> without likes, what are you gonna do for the gram? Right. You know, not to mention for people that use it for marketing, like for me personally, it lets me know what products or what things people want to see more. So if I post a, a picture of a, a maybe a Motorola phone and it only gets a thousand likes, nobody's interested in that. Right. Then I post the same Huawei one and it's five thousand likes. That's what people want to see. Right. So then that kind of guides me to how I'm going to create my next content. And then in in terms of the likes too, does it help you see who's liking it? Uh, me personally, I don't really care about that. You know. It's just a number. Yeah, you know. It's just a number. And then in in terms of the for uh, Instagram, that is on right. YouTube, totally different. But how? Uh, but you, you you mainly use YouTube. Yeah. That's your main main thing. Yeah. Because of the commercials, I mean, because of the the ads. Yeah, and the uh, side hustles that you generate from YouTube. Right. Because most companies, they have affiliates programs. So say I did a a JBL speaker, I'll make the money on YouTube from the ads, and then. I'll put a link for the JBL speaker, and when every time JBL sends one, they have to send me a little commission from that. Okay. So every product you do, most companies have affiliate programs, and you get involved like that. What about in terms of the future? Because there's so many people getting into this. Is there a danger, Prez, that it gets oversaturated? I don't think so. I think it's, you know, I think we're at the tip of the iceberg. I think it's going to continue to grow, you know, as um, digital marketing and social media continues to flourish, you know, you're going to find influencers who are going to become younger and younger. And, you know, brands are just, it, it's, it's a platform to market. You have to use it. People are on their phones you know, all day, every day, there's no way around it. So I think it's going to continue to grow. So people have, people have to, have to deal with it. Steph, in terms of, in terms of your, your career mm-hmm. as an influencer, do you, you, you do hair products, you do makeup products, you do a lot of clothing, but can you do several different companies within a particular thing, like several different makeup brands or several different hair products or yeah, how yeah. does that work? I feel for me, because I do kind of all over the place types of stuff, I'm not like super specialized. It's less stringent. Um, when you are uh, super specialized, let's say you're a makeup artist, I think it's inherent that you're going to be working with all these different brands. I think it really depends on your contracts too. I know that with certain contracts for me, I can't work with certain brands because they're direct competitors. Um, that's whether you have an exclusive contract or a non-exclusive contract. An exclusive contract is going to pay you more because you can't work with anybody else. Else. non-exclusive is going to pay you less um, so I think you know it's part of the hustle working with all these different brands but you have to make sure you're not breaching any part of your contracts with any of the other companies you're working with and philosophy because you're totally independent you don't have to worry about that right you That's just right. deal with whatever company whatever mm-hmm. product yep and um I don't only do tech stuff too so I'm trying to branch out into doing a little bit more but once you have a certain amount of followers or a certain following let me say it like that you could do anything you want We're seeing traditional adver- tra- traditional print advertising that mm-hmm. that they use the style on the websites for companies. Mm-hmm. It, it's almost imitating social media, like they have a personality instead of a, a, a model, you know, a model without a name. But or if it's a model, it's a model with a, a name and a personality. This is why I like this product. They're making that look more like social media. They have to. I mean, this is just the world that we live in. They, 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 if they want to be part of the game, they got to play the game by its rules. And you know, the world that we live in, the influencers rule. And um, <laughs> you know, they really have to tailor their ad just to even show that they got their finger on the pulse. Right. You know, that they can keep up where marketing is going. And, you know, at the end of the day, I really think that people have an insatiable appetite for for consuming content. So it, this is only going to continue to grow, Lisa. Just get bigger and bigger. Oh, all yeah. right. Well, I want to thank you for uh, all of you for being with us for this episode of Street Soldiers. Sean Prez, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah. King Steph, great to have you with us. Yeah. Thank you. And Flossie Carter. Wonderful to have you. Thank, thank you. you so much. My and, and thank you for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. Let's push for peace.